Now that is without getting to transmission lines. So tens of thousands of kilometres of transmission lines. Uh, and I've got to tell you, they're not going through Mossman. They're not going through Manly Beach. They're not showing up at Bondi. They are going through regional Australia. And they're just not necessary. I mean, in the terms of the mix of our, our energy production in this country, why on earth, why on earth would you invest so much in something that simply doesn't work? It doesn't work. If you've got solar panels on your roof to help you with your bills, knock yourself out. That's great. But the idea that it will run Australia's economy, that for those of us who might be in the hospital needing a quadruple bypass, will have to rely on the weather. For those of us in aged care facilities, it's kind of like our air conditioning. Have to look out the window to see if they can turn it on. It just doesn't work. So let's come back to some facts and let's have a look at what happens with these products because they only last between 20 and 30 years at best. Now that is assuming they don't get hit by a hailstorm, they don't get hit by a cyclone, we don't have a bushfire, which happens in Australia, I've, I've heard of them before. But what our dastardly villain doesn't want to talk about is what will we do with the waste? What do we do with the waste? So some of the research that I've had done through the Parliamentary Library and others, there will be 43 million tonnes estimated of wind turbine blades alone by 2050 around the globe. 43 million tonne. They're a carbon fibre composite, they can't be recycled, there's not much you can do with them. I, I think uh, Nick Cater found some up on a farm in the north somewhere. In Australia alone, there'll be 100,000 tonne of solar panel waste by 2035. And when they talk about recycling solar panels, the most recent data I could find is only 17% of that solar panel weight can actually be currently recycled. It is generally the glass and the aluminium. And, and that is about all. That is where they are, an 800 tonne concrete base inside these wind turbines. Now our dastardly villain, Chris, is very keen on East Coast New South Wales, offshore wind turbines. Anyone heard of those? Now I went and did some research. The height cap, the height cap for those wind turbines is 260 metres. Now, for those of you who live in Sydney, there's a thing down the road here, the Harbour Bridge, I think it's called. That is twice the height of the Sydney Harbour Bridge. And a 5,000 megawatt, 5,000 megawatt, megawatt wind farm off East Coast New South Wales. Well, let's be kind. Let's say they're five megawatts each. That is 1,000 turbines, 1,000 turbines. Now, I've got some mates in the Surfrider Foundation. They were, they were very much not keen on what was known as PEP 11, offshore gas exploration licence. I don't know if anyone's seen any of that. They used to love standing there and they'd have a silhouette of a, uh, of a drilling rig and they'd hold it up against the ocean and say, you really don't want one of these over the horizon where you can't see it. But what on earth will you do with a thousand offshore wind turbines when they come to the end of their useful life? They have to be removed and they still only have a utilisation rate of around 33, 35%. What will you do? So we come back to facts versus fiction. 